Last October, President Trump declared the opioid epidemic a public health emergency. To fight the opioid crisis. But it wasn't until last month that President Trump laid out his plan, which includes reducing the number of pills we take. We're going to cut nationwide opioid prescriptions by one-third over the next three years. Given our addiction to opioid drugs, it won't be easy. The man helping to make that happen, Scott Gottlieb, commissioner of the FDA and a doctor himself. And when you have tens of millions, really hundreds of millions of prescriptions being written, that's a lot of potential for abuse. And so I think a key is to try to bring down overall exposure to these drugs. Starting with his own colleagues. You and I were uh, practicing around the same time and we were taught some of the same things about uh, people should not be in pain. You know, that's something we can certainly take care of downplaying the, the potential concerns about these drugs. What about now? I think doctors from our generation and probably a little bit after were trained uh, in a way that you know, pain was the fifth vital sign and there was more liberal prescribing of these medications. We now recognize that wasn't appropriate. Um, so I think that there needs to be some effort to try to re-educate a generation of physicians. I think some form of mandatory education could make sense. The American Medical Association doesn't like the idea. They represent over 230,000 doctors and they wrote a letter. The headline, we do not believe that a federally mandated one-size-fits-all program would help to reverse the opioid epidemic. Another big issue on Dr. Gottlieb's agenda, smoking. Dramatically lowering smoking rates could be the single greatest intervention um, that we undertake over any reasonable period of time. To do so, the FDA is considering lowering the amount of nicotine in cigarettes to 0.4 milligrams. Currently, a cigarette has anywhere from 10 to 15 milligrams of nicotine. This would be the first time ever nicotine levels have even been addressed. There was previously no regulation on the upper limit of nicotine in cigarettes. Did that surprise you, given, given all this, this talk about cigarettes for the last you know, 40, 50 years, certainly? I think the best answer to that question of whether or not, of, of my view of whether or not there should or shouldn't have been regulation of nicotine in cigarettes is the fact that I'm seeking to regulate the content <laughs> of nicotine in cigarettes. The FDA believes that by dropping the amount of nicotine, about 5 million adult smokers will quit within a year. And another 33 million more people will be prevented from becoming regular smokers by the year 2100. Do you worry that with an issue like this that has no redeeming health qualities whatsoever, that 40, 50 years from now we're going to say that was another half attempt to try and cut down smoking? I, th I think we're pretty committed to trying to follow through on, a, on policies that could deliver a significant public health impact here. Are people going to say, well, okay, the FDA is now saying this, uh, these cigarettes at 0.4 is not going to be that bad for me. I can smoke. Well, if you look at our model, um, we don't estimate that there, people aren't going to still smoke cigarettes. Um, we estimate that far fewer people are going to smoke cigarettes and that people will, will look for non-combustible alternatives. Like e-cigarettes which have increased in use by 900% in high school students from 2011 to 2015 and are being heavily marketed toward a new generation. I have a kid who's starting high school in a couple of years. You're, you got kids who are going to start high school in a few years, a few years after that. High school students are using these e-cigarettes uh, at much higher rates than they have in the past. If the, the youth use continues at the rate at which it is, it just won't be acceptable Congress will step in, someone's going to step in and snuff this out. So I think we, if, we, if we all think that there's an opportunity here for adults, we've got to stop the kids from using these products. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, CNN, reporting.